Welcome to Celestial Insights, a weekly podcast that brings the stars down to earth. I'm your host, astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks. My purpose is to provide practical, unique, and insightful guidance to help you navigate the energies of the week like a boss. Hello, this is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste. And on this episode, I will discuss the astrology for the week of July 10th. The theme of this week is adjusting to a new reality. So there are three big things I want you to think about this week. The first thing I want to bring your attention to is that the United States is in the heart of its Pluto return. So a planetary return is when the planet comes back to the same exact place as it was when whatever you were discussing was born, whether it be a person or a corporation or a country. These are the things we most often use birth charts for. So there is a new start to the energy and we can cast a chart and it gives insight into what is going to happen for the next period until there's another return. People are most familiar with their solar returns. This happens every year on your birthday or the day before, day after, where the sun comes back to the exact point it was at the moment of your birth. And then the astrologer can cast a chart and give you insight into what is likely to come up along the year for you. So you can get a solar return reading. And I call that the return to the stars reading. So you can check my website if you're interested in that. Pluto moves the slowest of the 10 planets we use in modern astrology. It moves approximately one to three degrees a year. And it takes 248 years approximately to go around the entire natal chart. So people never have a Pluto return. You may have a Pluto transit, and these are known to be extremely intense. Pluto's energy is deeply emotional. It delves into the shadows. It's very volcanic. We can think of a Pluto transit as being a purification by fire in some sense. It's very uncomfortable. It essentially burns things down to the studs, eliminates everything that is unneeded. It brings to light things that were hidden or concealed. There can be a sense of obsession is a Pluto word, control, violence, power dynamics, There is essentially a rebirth with a Pluto transit, and it brings shadows to light to be dealt with. A transformation is a key word around Pluto. So it's never a lighthearted thing when someone has a Pluto transit, and these transits can last for several years. Now, it's not all bad with a Pluto transit. I don't mean to scare you. It's just very intense but it's an evolutionary process that's non-negotiable. And often afterwards, it's one of the most powerful things that people experience and can be intensely healing because oftentimes things are brought to light that really need to be brought to light, even if it's uncomfortable. And one of my mentors, Ann Ortley, always says, after the Pluto transit comes the present. And since this is multi years, it's a very slow moving process where it may not be just an event. It can be like an unpeeling of an onion you can think about with this. Now, Pluto has been in the sign of Capricorn since 2008. And you can think about how the political systems and governments and corporations have changed so much over that time period. 2008 was when we had a big financial crisis around the world that started showing us how unstable certain practices and especially like financial practices were. And the government came in in the United States to essentially bail out certain corporations because they were too big to fail was one of the things that came to light during that time. 
So you could just consider back then what was going on. Well, now Pluto is at the 27th degree of Capricorn, which is at the same place it was when the United States was born. And this country has been going through this Plutonic experience where things that were buried have been coming to light and it's intensified, especially over the last couple of years. And this year, the United States has three exact hits. The first one was in February. The next one is July 11th. So that's on Monday. And the last one is at the end of the year, December 28th. The first hit was on January 20th, four days before Russia invaded Ukraine. And war is a Pluto topic. And this has put a lot of pressure, another Pluto topic, on the United States. As we move towards the second return, there are three things that have really stood out to me. Pluto in the United States chart is in the second house. The second house rules money, monetary policy, everything related to our financial systems. And the story of the year has been about inflation and the pressure it is putting on everyday Americans because all of our goods and services are becoming more and more expensive as money loses its value. As a consequence, the Fed did this big spike in interest rates, which is making it more expensive to borrow money. And the stock market has been crashing for various reasons. And so there is so much about a transformation of the financial systems and we're headed towards a potential recession or potentially even, hopefully not, a depression in the United States. There is also a real feeling that democracy is holding on by a thread The January 6th committee is discussing everything that went on at the January 6th riots, insurrections, whatever you want to call them, and the role that Donald Trump and his allies had to play in what is essentially considered by many a coup attempt to overturn the United States of America and cancel out the election. So this is very concerning for a lot of people. The second house is also values. What truths do we hold to be self-evident? What do we value about elections and democracy and all of these kinds of things are in focus. Also, Roe versus Wade was overturned and the implications go far beyond abortion. So women no longer have a federal right to get an abortion in the United States. Each state can now make its own laws and own rules. This decision has far-reaching consequences for the U.S. US because in the ruling, it was also commented by Clarence Thomas, I'm just paraphrasing here, but that he would welcome to review other cases that had to do with the privacy rights issue. So that included Griswold versus whatever, which is about contraception, as well as he specifically mentioned gay marriage. So essentially, the government can be doing surveillance on what is going on in people's bedrooms is a topic that is coming up. Something that we thought was decided is no longer in force, and it feels like there's this governmental control and condemnation potentially and surveillance. These are all Pluto topics about what goes on between two people in their relationship. Can they use an IUD or can they not? Can they use birth control pills or can they not? This could be topics that go back to the states for them to decide potentially. So it's really interesting. It's destabilizing. It's volcanic. It really is unsettling all of the things that this Pluto return is bringing up for the United States. So we'll see if anything happens this week, but it's an ongoing process that is going to continue until Pluto moves into the sign of Aquarius. And that doesn't happen fully until 2024. It'll dip into Aquarius next year, but then dip back out. So it's just something to be aware of. This is the undercurrent of everything that's going on around us. And because the United States is a superpower, what is happening here is having effects around the world. 
The next thing I want to bring your attention to is that we have a full moon this week, which is a full moon in Capricorn. So I think, you know, things will be coming to light and it's going to be a very intense full moon. It will be at 21 degrees of Capricorn. Pluto's at 27 degrees. So that is pretty close. So this full moon is going to be plutonic. The sun will be in the sign of cancer. And we think of cancer topics around home, family, and foundations, and also emotional safety and security and how we feel we need to protect ourselves. And the moon being in Capricorn, topics that it rules also have to do with duty, responsibility, tradition, authority. And so when the sun and the moon oppose each other, it's very illuminating. Things can be revealed. It can really sink in the impact of all the changes that have been going on. People may be feeling a lot of intense emotions this week because the moon, what was going to happen, it's going to talk to the three outer planets in succession. It's going to have a trine to Uranus. So ease and flow between the planet that is about shocks and awe and sudden events and sudden insights and downloads and things like that. And then it will make a sextile, also an easy aspect with Neptune, the planet of illusions and delusions, which can bring confusion and feelings of futility. It also can bring creativity and spiritual experiences. And then the conjunction to Pluto, which unearths things and it can be a sense of like a purification by fire. So some people, especially if their chart is activated, may have really intense emotions around this full moon. If uh, you are doing one of these ayahuasca or ceremonies or something like that, hold on to your hat. It could be unbelievable. Hopefully you will come back to your sanity after you are done with that. So you may need to give others grace if they're really going through it this week, as well as yourself and understand that it's a transit. It is temporary. The following week, things will be better. The last thing I want to bring your attention to is that there are multiple aspects called King Kunxes this week. A King Kunx is when there are two planets that are in signs that have nothing in common, either by mode, in terms of how the energy is expressed, cardinal, initiating, fixed, like that holding of the energy, or mutable, the adjustable, changeable nature, or element, fire, earth, air, or water. So they're 150 degrees apart. And I love what Bernadette Brady in her predictive astrology book talks about it. And she has redone this book. It was originally called The Eagle and the Lark. And a new edition has been launched this year. And it is fantastic. Both of them are. But you can look at the link in my bio to my Amazon store. It's one of my recommendations. So if you're interested in understanding the technique of forecasting, I highly recommend it. And in terms of the King Kong, she describes this aspect as moving into a new situation, change, release, or letting go. So it's perfect that at a time of a full moon, which one of the things we do at the full moon is let go, that this aspect is really prevalent this week. I'll just read a bit from this book. The King Kunks causes change and separation in its mode as a traveler. It walks on stage and stops the play, changes the plot, or moves everyone to a new theater. Change and separation can be expressed in many ways, starting with the ultimate separation of death, traveling, illnesses, moving house and home, or there may just be isolating yourself because you are studying something. From changing an opinion to breaking up a relationship, the King Kunks wants you to move into a new situation, whether you are ready for it or not. Sometimes this is very stressful. At other times, it may be joyful. So think about that as you're moving through the week, how you feel like, you know, there's these non-negotiable changes that are coming up that are forcing you to release things you may want to or not want to. 
and move into new situations. When two planets are King Kunks, they can't see each other exactly clearly. There's a need for adjustment. It's an irritant. It's not as strong as the other hard aspects of the conjunction square and opposition. It can be a little harder to recognize until afterwards when you look back and see that like how I described it and read from you from the book. So yeah, so just stay present. As we get to the days, I will talk to you about what it could mean for each day. But think about the King Kongs. So on Sunday, the word of the day is awaken. The moon moves from the intense and watery sign of Scorpio into Sagittarius at 1.30 a.m. Pacific time. If you're awake, see if you notice a mood switch, a lightning, a desire for adventure and freedom. I highly encourage you to get out in nature and maybe even go for a bike ride or a run or a drive. Yeah, do something outside today. The fiery energy of Sagittarius would love it and would love for you to feel inspired. Also on this day, the sun in Cancer will sextile Uranus and Taurus at 18 degrees of each of those signs. The sun will also biquintiles structure-loving Saturn and biquintiles are grace notes. They're a way to synthesize energies in two different signs. And parallel Venus, Venus rules our relationships, our money, beauty, and the sun always spotlights things. So I think this could be an internal awakening, Uranus, about being your own authority and considering your values. You may feel some external pressure, but really think about what you can control and what you can't and know the difference. On this day, Venus in Gemini will King Kunks the South Node in Scorpio. And the South Node is a drain and Scorpio topics can be about debt or things you owe others. It also can bring up things about intimacy. So this is this adjusting energy where you may find that you need to let go of something. And Venus will also buy quintile Pluto. So there can be feelings of crisis that can erupt in a relationship where maybe a secret is revealed in some way. Like for instance, you could get the credit card statement and realize your partner spent money on something that's putting pressure on your relationship or something like that. And there needs to be an adjustment, maybe some kind of conversation that has to happen. So just keep that in mind on Sunday. Do you see this come up in your own life? It depends on whether your chart is activated. On Monday, the word of the day is transformation. This is the day of the Pluto return. Who knows if anything will happen exactly on this day, but just think about it. This is non-negotiable transformations and rebirths that are going on for the collective. We have no choice. We have to accept what is happening and move forward. So think about things you can do to ease the pain of any transformations that are difficult that you're going through. On Tuesday, the word of the day is catharsis. It's a time to release what is no longer serving us. The moon enters the sign of Capricorn at 2.01 a.m. Pacific time. Capricorn is an earth sign. It's an opportunity to be practical and grounded. Think about our duties and responsibilities. Think about authority again. Authority is a big word for this week. Think about things like that and think about what do you prioritize and put value on. On this day also, the sun will sextile the north node. Sun in Cancer, north node in Taurus, both at 20 degrees. This is an opportunity to potentially make some new allies. You can continue the awakening feelings that you're having. Now, Mercury and Cancer will also square Chiron at 16 degrees. So emotions may be a little tender. Watch what you say to people so you don't hurt their feelings. Also, watch what you say to yourself, or you may have some insight about some old pain or old hurt that comes up at this time. Now, Venus in Gemini is trying Saturn and Aquarius, both air signs at 24 degrees. 
So you may connect, Venus connects us with things. You may connect with the reality of whatever situation that you are in, or if you're struggling in anything, or if there's something, work can be a real topic that comes up with the Capricorn full moon. So just be present. I highly encourage journaling around these moon phases. So that is my suggestion for you. On Wednesday, the word of the day is comprehension. There will be a full moon at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time at 21 degrees of Capricorn. The sun at 21 Cancer, the moon at 20 one Capricorn, what is revealed to you? What can you release that's no longer serving you? Now, Mercury and Cancer will sextile Uranus and Taurus at 18 degrees of both signs. Sextiles are opportunities. Mercury and Uranus together can be an awakening. Or someone says something to you. Yeah, just the light bulb goes off. Now, Venus will square Neptune this day. Venus and Gemini, Neptune and Pisces, both at 25 degrees. This is breakup energy. Venus squared Neptune is called the rose-colored glasses aspect, where people get into relationships where they don't see things clearly. Because Neptune is the fog, it's illusions and delusions, so it's a mist. People with this can be very disillusioned in their love relationships at times until they start learning how to integrate these energies and more take their time and letting relationships evolve and letting people show themselves, believing what people say to them. When people tell you who they are, believe them. Maya Angelou's wise words. So there can be a sense of disillusion of harmony, but I think these two aspects together can be an awakening where someone wakes up to how they let their desire for connection and relationship and love cloud their judgment and have an awakening and comprehend what's really going on so that they can make better decisions. It can be about a person, a job, a situation, something with one of your children could come to light. It could manifest in a lot of different ways. So just stay present and see if this impacts you. On Thursday, the word of the day is community. So we really want to think about the collective and also our community at work. Moon enters Aquarius at 1.13 a.m. Pacific time. Aquarius is an air sign. It can give us a sense of detachment in order to see things from a higher perspective. Aquarius rules the community. It rules our groups, our friends, and things like that. Also our hopes and dreams. So Mercury will sextile the North Node on this day. So helpful people could be available to you. Also think about how you can assist others. Either maybe your neighbor needs some help or a friend or a colleague. Now Mars in Taurus will square the North Node of the United States chart at 6 Leo on this day. So this may be where we see something around the Pluto return. The North Node for the United States is in the eighth house of debt. So there may be monetary policy or money news on this day or leading up to this day. Mars transits build. So I'm really interested to see what is announced on that day or around it, around these topics. But for our own lives, let's think about how we can be in community with others. On Friday, the word of the day is gratification. So really watch to see how people gratify their own desires at the expense of other people. On this day, Venus is King Kong's Pluto, both at 27 degrees. So Venus and Gemini, Pluto and Capricorn. Venus rules relationships and it's all our relationships, not just our love relationships. So we've talked a lot about Pluto. So see if issues come up around jealousy, envy, vengeance, obsession, someone trying to use money or influence to assert power. This aspect, Venus, King Kong, Pluto, Reminds me of that movie, Indecent Proposal, with Demi Moore and Woody Harrelson and Robert Redford, where Robert Redford was envious and coveted us of Demi Moore, Woody Harrelson's wife. 
So he made this indecent proposal. Well, he used his wealth and he offered, you know, them a certain amount of money to have one night of sex with Demi Moore. So they accepted this offer, spoiler alert, the movie's from, I think, the 90s, and it had a plutonic impact on their relationship where they didn't realize getting into it how much would need to be adjusted in their relationship and how this one night would turn into long simmering feelings of obsession and anger and jealousy and compulsion. So yeah, that's a great movie to think about with this Venus King Kung's Pluto. I've also been watching The Staircase, which is, I'd watched the documentary years ago on Netflix. I highly encourage you to watch it. It It's so good if you like any kind of true crime sort of things. And now there is a series on HBO with Colin Firth and Tony Collette, and essentially this woman in North Carolina was died and was at the bottom of her staircase. And the show is all about, you know, the husband. Did he do it? Did he or did he not? Pluto can also be about manipulation. And there's various scenes where he uses Venus is influence on the relationship to get people to do what he wants, whether it's his wife or his kids, like having them sit in court and watch, you know, have to see their mother's body at the bottom of the steps, even though emotionally they don't want to go. There's one in particular that has a real problem with this. It's really interesting. I think that Venus, King Kung's Pluto, thinking back about the definition where you're being pushed to separate from something you desire potentially in order to Venus placate someone else but it's underhanded and underneath the surface with that plutonic energy. So on Saturday, the word of the day is purify. The moon enters Pisces at 1.18 a.m. Pacific time. This is watery, mutable energy. It's the last sign of the zodiac. There is always a sense of endings. On this day, sun King Kunks is Saturn. So sun puts a spotlight, Saturn, you can also think about duty, structures, restrictions, something may come to your attention. Saturn also rules burdens. I would love for you to let go of a burden with this aspect. Now, Mercury will also King Kung Saturn. It's also contra-parallel Pluto and parallel Venus. So a lot can be going on internally in our emotional body. Mercury is in cancer that hopefully we can connect to our intellect and it can have to do with relationships or burdens we're doing for other people in relationships because of manipulation, that plutonic topic. And maybe we can release some of those things and let them go and let them love the, us for ourselves rather than feeling like we need to be, you know, serving some things against our own best interests potentially. Or maybe you're the person who's putting the pressure on other people to do what you want in manipulative ways. And maybe you can make a change about that. Mercury will be Kazemi. It will go through the heart of the sun at 1237 PM Pacific time at 24 Cancer. So when a planet goes to the heart of the sun in Kazemi, it is purified by the fire of the sun. You can take time out, like give yourself time to do either just sit and journal or do a meditation or something. And you can get amazing downloads. I'd really love for the fog to clear in some way. When it does this, Kazemi, Mercury is moved from a quincunx from Saturn and trining Neptune. The fog could really, really clear. Think about how you can release structures and limitations to have more pleasurable relationships or pursue your dreams in life and manifest your desires. So think about some of those things, but definitely take advantage of Mercury Kazemi. So just stop, get quiet, get the downloads that potentially will be available for you. So that's it for this week's episode. It was extra long because I really wanted to talk about the Pluto return. I hope you found it useful. 
please feel free to email me at Celeste at Astrology by Celeste or drop me a line on Instagram with any astrology and action stories about anything that came to light this week or other elite weeks that you connect back to the podcast. Or just let me know how the daily themes are playing out for you. So take care and I'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Celestial Insights. To learn more about my work, please visit my website, astrologybyceleste.com, where I offer personal readings, horary consultations, cosmic coaching, group events, and classes to help guide people to higher levels of fulfillment. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook at Astrology by Celeste. If you enjoyed Celestial Insights, Please help others find the show. Follow, rate it five stars, or write a nice review. I would so appreciate it. I'm astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks, and I'll be back next week. 